this should not be a gray area. I'm very happy to have a little conversation about sex. And that makes me feel incredible. It's getting a bit hot in here. I feel like I need to calm down. This is so dear. <laughs> Let's do this. I am so excited for this. You have no idea. Obviously I chat a lot over on my podcast. If you're new here, I have a podcast. It's called Life's Your Bitch. We talk all things navigating our 20s, growing up, self-development, a little sprinkle of wellness and a lot of oversharing. But I feel like it's been a hot minute since I've sat down with my YouTube fam and done just that. And I always feel like the YouTube audience, the demographic, that's a little bit of spice. Like over on my podcast, we're giving wholesome. These questions are giving bedroom. <laughs> I feel like the last time I did one of these, I was 20. I hadn't met my current boyfriend. I think I was probably like pre-breakup. Like the, she was a different kind of gal. So you're joining me now, 22, with a whole lot of different views on things. So I'm excited to do this. Welcome back. Let's dive straight in if you're new here please do subscribe it would mean a lot like the video i feel like let's just start strong this was one of my one of my favorite questions on there how to glow and not give a fuck about men's opinions on me let's start strong baby girl i feel like this all comes from validation seeking validation which at the end of the day comes from self-worth i think if you know you are impressive sexy confident clever hardworking, passionate, creative, whatever of those words resonate with you, if you feel like you are that, you're not, sorry, I feel like I've got, yeah, I do. There we go. If you are looking for someone else to tell you that you are all of those things, I feel like you can never like truly glow and you will always be seeking that kind of male validation and from other people but as like straight girls I think yes it does come very heavily from males and I know that's something that I have struggled with a lot in the past like when I was single when I would go out I would be upset if no one in the room fancied me I would be upset if no one in the room in the bar in the club tried to kiss me I'm gonna be honest which is wild because now I I mean I have a gorgeous wonderful boyfriend but now i don't think i would want that and even then i didn't want it i didn't really want to kiss anyone I didn't really care that much i just wanted to know that someone wanted to kiss me so i 100 percent get where you're coming from and i know the feeling and to be honest i don't think it's a very nice feeling like having your outfit kind of like centered around like the male gaze and presenting yourself in a way to like attract male attention like i get it and it's not nice so i think at the end of the day it comes down to self-worth and i've just done a whole episode on this on my patreon podcast but the gist of what i was trying to say was in order to not seek validation and have a high level of self-worth i think you really have to keep yourself to certain standards that make you feel good. You have to prove to yourself day in, day out that you say what you're gonna do and you have got your back no matter what. And whatever that is to you, to me, the thing that makes me feel tip fucking top is hitting my gin sessions and my runs for the week. I'm currently doing six. And if I finish the week, no, it's currently Friday. No, it's currently Thursday and I've got one more. I've got a long run on Sunday and I spent Monday to Thursday doing all of my gym sessions because my friends are coming and I was like, I don't fuck about, I don't miss these now. Like this is the standard that I hold myself to. Even did a double session on Monday to make sure I got them all done. And that's the standard I hold myself to. I hold myself to a standard of eight hours sleep, three meals a day, hydration, good health. And that makes me feel in incredible because i know i'm showing up for myself on a day-to-day -day basis i don't need anyone else to tell me that i'm impressive and i'm sexy because <laughs> and i think when you have these certain standards for yourself that are a little bit higher you don't accept anything less from anybody anyone else so you're not seeking it either because you know full well you've got your back like i have got i look at myself in the mirror daily and i'm like i've got you baby girl like just then i was like yeah we'll film the video and then if you want lunch we'll make you lunch baby girl and if not we'll go and do this like i treat myself like i'm in a little relationship with myself and i'm like whatever you need and that helps help me so much not seek validation and i said in my podcast i was going through it a little bit like in my own relationship right now i kind of felt like i was looking for a little bit of extra validation and reassurance that i didn't need because my boyfriend is a great guy and really does not deprive me of that 
So I was like, why are you looking for more? And then I realized, oh, it's because I don't feel impressive and sexy and hardworking at the moment. Like I'm not showing up for myself. So I'm wanting someone else to show up for me. And when you put yourself in that position, you just expect less from people because if you can't give yourself the bare minimum, you're gonna seek the bare minimum from someone else and accept it from someone else and stick to them. You have to get to the point where you know yourself and you trust yourself and you've just got your own back. Having a low sex drive, I feel like a weird girl. Um, you're absolutely not. I know so many people and like friends that have struggled with this. Like me and my friends were literally sitting having a conversation about this the other day. And I think one, it's natural, especially if you're on some kind of like birth control or your hormones are just a bit out of whack. Maybe you've just come off of birth control. Like that is all known to give you such a low sex drive. And it's like, that's how it's contraception. Cause it's like, well, you're not gonna wanna have sex anyway. So don't worry about it. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and advise people to come off birth control because I mean, it's safe, it's effective. It's not my place, but hey, I do think it's a bit, it's doing stuff to our bodies that we're not really probably aware of. Personally, it's never something I've struggled with, but I think it's because I know what kind of gets me excited. Like obviously I've got days and like weeks or whatever, if I'm stressed or I'm like, oh my God, can't even think about that. Like, mm -mm, I'm tired, like it's bedtime. <laughs> but I think I know what gets me going. Like I seen a TikTok of a girl that was like, I don't do spontaneous sex. She was like, I need my boyfriend to like, give me a little signal in the morning before we leave for work that like, oh, like maybe we should get a little bit freaky later on. And she's like, then I can think about it all day and I can like, we can like text about it and whatever. And I think knowing that like, does someone like springing it on you, turn you on? Does like building it up and thinking about it for like a day or like a week or the weekend, is that what gets you excited? Obviously I'm talking about this in a perspective that like you have a boyfriend because if you've got a low sex drive and you don't have a boyfriend, that's fine. Just don't have, don't have that much sex. <laughs> but I think having a conversation about it, like trying different things, seeing what gets you excited and trying to like work towards that. And also just like knowing that it's absolutely okay. Um, and you're not weird because I think the longer that you have in your head that it's weird and it's like not very normal and there's something wrong with you and like all of these things can like almost turn you off less and less and less because you're thinking less of yourself which isn't gonna make you feel very sexy and like on that note maybe you've got a low sex drive so maybe you can like mm, hint your boyfriend i'd love some new lingerie and then that can make you feel a bit more spicy like i think whatever it is that's gonna make you more in the mood. And that is just trial and error as well. And also I just think open communication with whoever it is that you're having sex with is really important because it lets them know it's nothing to do with you, it's to do with me, I'm stressed at work, I would love it if you could do this or if you could like text me like this or touch me in this way, like that is gonna help this whole situation. I don't know if any of you have ever watched Sex, Love and Goop on Netflix. It's really, <laughs> it's like, I can't really remember it. I watched it like two years ago, but I remember being like, oh, interesting. And like learning different things about how, this is TMI, mum, dad, like actually please do, you don't watch this. I am the sex friend, love to talk about it. Like let's definitely have this conversation. <laughs> like I'm, I'm, an, I'm not an open book. Like I'm not gonna tell you every tiny small detail, but like I'm very happy to have a little conversation about sex. And it was really interesting because there's like five different ways essentially I think that like people are like turned on. And like there was a woman who on there from like sense, like her husband didn't even touch her, just like the hands, like above the body, like, oh my God, is he gonna touch me? Is he not? This is so TMI. It's not TMI, it's literally a show you can go and watch it. But like, I feel like we've not had this conversation before. Anyway. And I just think things like that, I just find them really interesting. So it's like, you never know, you might be like that. So of course you're not kind of like, you've got a low sex drive because maybe you're not having sex like that. So you're not excited to have sex because you're not loving the sex that you're having because maybe you like something else. Okay, I was gonna go straight onto another sex one, but like maybe we just need to relax a minute. Like it's getting a bit hot in here. Like I feel like I need to calm down. With that, someone said, I've got a higher sex drive than my partner and I feel like he's annoyed. Help, again, conversation. Maybe you can get a fun little for yourself so you don't always need him there and you can go and have that time alone, which I think is absolutely fine, by the way. But again, I think these things always, like when it's relationships and stuff, it always comes down to open communication. Like he's probably not annoyed. He probably just is like, doesn't know what to do because just because he has a low sex drive doesn't mean he should just be having sex when you wanna have sex. So maybe he's just feeling like he can't really 
satisfy you and like fulfill your needs so just talking to him about that and like finding other ways to do that i just think something like that is like a conversation that needs to be had and i think if you can't have the, those conversations with the person that you're with that in itself is a conversation to have because well, clearly you're having sex so like let's talk about the dynamic and what's going on here because if you think there's a problem it needs to be aired let's go off relationships for a minute how to thrive being single and stop caring about dating guys so much so when I, when my ex broke up with me, let's not pretend I did that breaking up. Um, when my ex broke up with me, I straight away was like, let's download a dating app because I had loads of fun on them the summer before, that's how we met. And when we broke up, I was like, the one thing we're not gonna do, we're, we're being me. I talk about myself in like a weird perspective. So if I said that in this video, that's what I'm talking about. I was like, look myself in the mirror. I was like, we're not gonna be downloading dating apps until we are very happy in ourselves. The last thing we're gonna do to heal this breakup is go and seek male validation. Cause like I said, I knew that, oh, problem with it is so extreme, but I knew it was something that made me feel better and that I probably enjoyed and relied on a little bit too much, probably seeked out a little bit too much. And I don't think it was in a way that like I wasn't confident. I just, in, I just enjoyed it. But that in turn, I was just like, mm, there's there's clearly something there. Because other people were like, I'm going out with friends on a night out and they are not looking twice if anybody's looking at them, but I am. So clearly there's something. So I promised myself that I would not download a dating app until I was, felt like 100% healed and I knew I was on there just to have a good time. Cause I don't think there's a problem with like just dating for a good time and like having them just to chat to people and like literally a pastime, like don't think that's a problem as long as everybody's on the same page and nobody's getting hurt. But that was my promise. That was like, that's, I was like, that's how I'm gonna get over this. We're not doing this whole dating app thing until we're hundred percent and I could not recommend it more. Because then in those moments where I was like, I don't feel very good, like I want someone else to tell me and I'd go to do it. I was like, you made a promise this isn't how we're gonna fix this because then this is how we're gonna look for it forever. And then when you join a new relationship, you're just gonna be codependent on them feeling that. And when you when you feel like that, go into them and them filling that hole for you. But is it, did Harry Styles say, I always talk about filling your own cup, isn't Harry Styles say like, fill up your own cup and let them fall in love with the overflow. Like that's, that is, I want that tattooed on me. Like I want a little water glass filled tattooed on me because it's just something I believe so wholeheartedly in that, nobody should be filling those gaps and holes for you so how you do it is the moment you realize you're looking for it you're like okay what do what do i want from those right now so the moment you realize you need something a hole fill in <laughs> i didn't say that you try and i was about to say you try and fill it yourself god jesus <laughs> you just realize how you wanted them to do that i interviewed had a chat with holly brooks on my podcast recently and she said when she like when her and her ex broke up, she sat and wrote down a list of everything she was looking for from a relationship. And then she sat down and she was like, do you know what? Actually, there's nothing here I can't do. Like buy flowers, go out for dinner, compliment myself, like make myself feel confident, lift me up, support me. Like I can do all of those things myself. So I think that is such good advice of being like, why do you care so much about dating guys? What is it that you want out of it? And how can you do that yourself? If you're going out and buying yourself flowers every week and taking yourself out for a coffee on a Sunday and a long walk, when a guy comes in and offers you coffee on a Sunday walk and brings you flowers, you're not impressed. You're like, oh, thanks, that's kind, because of course it is kind. But they're not blowing your socks off and like, oh my God, like this man is amazing, because you do that for yourself every Sunday. If a man comes in and he's like, you're so good at what you like do, like I feel like you're gonna go so far in your career and you're so beautiful and you're so confident, you're like, yeah, I know. Thanks, again, kind, thanks but like, you're not bringing anything to the table here. And I think that is what we should be striving for. So whatever it is that you're looking for in dating guys, validation, confidence, a good time. How can you bring that into your own life? Spend more time with friends, affirmations, work on yourself, start a passion project. I think it comes down to the why. On the other side of that, someone said how to be more independent in a relationship. Again, I definitely had this for like a little minute in my relationship. I've always think I've been quite independent. And I just got to the point where I was like, mm, I feel like I'm waiting on whatever his next steps were, whatever timeline he thought we were gonna go down. I was kind of like, okay, la 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 la. I just said to my friends, I was like, actually, I feel like I'm, I don't know, like 
I'm living alone. I feel like I was just becoming like codependent on like the friends and the relationships in my life, not just my boyfriend. So I had to take a step back and be like, what, what, what am I doing for me right now? And I think that is so important. Like what is your thing that you do away from your relationship and how can you nurture that more? What is something that you wish you could spend more time on? What is something that you spent a lot of time on when you were single, when you were getting to know this person? How can we bring more of that into our lives maybe you have something that's like you and your friends thing or just like your thing so important because i think it just shines through in everything else you do i think you have better friendships you have better relationships like even the last like month where i feel like i've just kind of been tunnel vision me while nurturing like my friends and my relationship but like having that focus on me and like building like a really high level of self-worth back and being independent again because i feel like i lived alone got thrown in the deep end loved it then kind of like hibernated and then I I feel like I'm now finding such good balance and I said this again in my Patreon podcast I just feel so much more playful with life I feel a lot lighter I feel a lot bouncier I feel like I'm able to like turn up as me in all of my relationships and it just makes everything so much better like nurturing the relationship you have with yourself is just so worth your time in every aspect okay <laughs> how to spice up sexy time in a long-term relationship how do I want to answer this in a way that I'm also happy to put on the internet? <laughs> Again, this is really boring and you don't think it's like, I don't know, when you think like sexy time, you don't think this. <laughs> Talking about your sexy time, I think is really important. And if you're enjoying it, something new you want to try, like just having a lot of conversation about it, I think is really important. And then, because then you can gauge when it's like, okay, maybe we need to try something new or like maybe we're really good or you just get to know each other a bit more. I think talking about it is really important. Obviously, any kind of communication or relationship is just, again, it's like self-worth. It's like the heart of it. It's like, are you talking about it? How's the conversation about it going? I honestly think just trying new things and watching things like Sex, Love and Goop, like maybe you can watch it together. And there's like, there's like an erotic blueprint test you can take like I make my friends take it like it's just a funny little thing and it tells you like what kind of person you are and like what you might enjoy and just having conversations like that like maybe getting each other funny gifts for like Valentine's Day and anniversaries and birthdays like I always get a stupid little gift <laughs> you know what I mean just to like try and add to the collection and I just think it's funny like not just pure sex toys but just like funny little things and it just keeps it light and it keeps it fresh and it keeps it fun. And there's always like something new to try. And if you don't like it and it doesn't really work or it feels a bit awkward or whatever, it's like, okay, fine. Watch like funny things like Sex, Love and Goop together. Maybe watch like How to Build a Sex Room. I think that, <laughs> I think that is such a good show on Netflix. I just think it's so interesting. And then you can get, because they like, they take people and like test their limits kind of. Like it's a very funny, like very, not PG, but like, it's not weird. It's not like, you're not literally watching people. Do you know what I mean? I do honestly think the more open you are and the more conversations you have about your sexy time, the better it's gonna be. So chat. Is there anything you ever wanted to try? Be honest with me. I'll let you know if I'm down to try it. No judgment as well. And like no awkwardness. Just being like, is there anything you've ever wanted to try? Like ever. And then you say something and you are well in your rights to be like, okay, no, bit too far. But what about? Just introduce new things, talk about it. I feel like once you figure out a dynamic that works for you and you have these conversations, it doesn't really, it doesn't really get old. <laughs> Someone said, you've said you've missed your period a lot. Me too, please talk about it. I don't really feel like I'm in the position to talk about this because I don't really know and I probably should be being a bit more proactive about it to be honest and I, I do think I'm going to go to the doctor but the reason I'm putting it off is just because I feel like I'm going to get there and if I get a male doctor they're just going to be like do you want the pill like no I no I fucking don't want the pill but to give you a bit of context maybe you can maybe you can help me or just it might make you feel less alone I have been uh, I've always kind of had irregular periods but I went on the pill when I was about 16 and again had really irregular periods tried the inject no tried the implant sorry had a constant period on the implant i kind of would have three weeks on like three days off and that would be me like i was basically on a constant period for six months obviously got that taken out they did want to put me on the pill as well and i was like 
literally what's the point so i've always struggled with it and then i got the injection which really worked for me and i had the injection for three years it would have worn off last august so we are now like a year and like half not really a year and like four months down the line i didn't have any periods from august until december and then i actually had a pretty regular period for maybe about three so like three months, I feel like up until March, I was having like three, like strictly three day periods, which is something I have never experienced. Even like when I first started my period and I was never on contraception, I've never been that gal. I've never had short, consistent periods. So I was like, okay. And then I didn't have one from like March until, and then I think I had my first period again in October last month after my half marathon. And I just had another period again at the same time, like a week ago. Can't talk on it. Some people on my Instagram did say I had PCOS maybe and I should go and get it checked. I'm also kind of like, maybe my body is just still adjusting. Like I've been on contraception for a long time, like throughout my life. Like maybe I just don't know, don't respond well to it. Maybe I'm just someone that doesn't have great periods. And I can't say, I've got much more to say on the subject. Some people were saying different like vitamins to take and different like hormone supplements to take and stuff, but I don't know. I just really want to, I'd, I think I'm at the point where I'd rather leave my body alone and let it do its thing. But I am going to go to the doctors and just make sure nothing's wrong. But other than that, my vibe is kind of like, let's see if I can just get this back. Making sure I'm at a healthy weight, I'm eating enough food, I'm getting enough sleep, I'm keeping my stress at bay. Like the, the fucking effect stress has on your period is mental. My friend was so stressed for three months and then was like, I'm really stressed, I haven't had a period. Quit her job. The next week her period came and it's been like regular ever since like it's actually insane like keeping your stress at bay eating enough food healthy fats trying to yeah sleep and just like general well-being generally looking after yourself is going to help so much but never underestimate the impact stress has on your body because it's crazy oh my god okay i'm sorry i feel like that has been a lot of sex but i wanted to talk about this one someone said bringing up using a condom i said to my boyfriend i was like what would you say about this and he was like any guy that's not bringing up a, like bringing it up himself you shouldn't be sleeping with and i was like oh my god <laughs> no i love you because bare minimum but this is what i always say like i've had a friend before be like oh he doesn't want to use a condom so i don't want to have sex with him but like basically trying to chase him and like trying to make him wear a condom and have sex and i was like if this man is saying no he's not gonna put a condom on to have sex with you why are you chasing him please leave him the alone that is stupid so not even just unattractive like what who are you to tell me no e ick red flag get rid if bringing up i know it, oh, i know it can be a bit like oh should we like it's a bit of a vibe killer but it's also not and it shouldn't be and if you're having to bring it up one not sure about that because i don't know like to me, a guy should, like if I'm having sex with you for the first time, don't know why I said it like that when I've been saying it the whole, the whole episode. <laughs> Sorry, I used to podcast the whole video. If I'm having to bring it up the first time we're doing sexy time. Okay, maybe it slipped your mind. Maybe whatever you didn't used to it with your ex. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to say it once. If it's like a, oh, I don't know. door is there so that's actually my thought and other than that i'm not even gonna stand sit here and be like it can be a bit awkward because like no this is the bare minimum this is the protocol this is <laughs> like this isn't this is this should not be a gray area is i think what i'm trying to say like this shouldn't be a conversation that we're having how you bring it up you're about to have sex and you say we've got a condom if he says no you say i've got some in my drawer we put it on. If he says no, you say, okay. Bye! <laughs> should not be a grey area, should not be an awkward area, shouldn't even be a conversation we're having, which is almost why I wanted to have it to be like, hello girls, by the way, you are always within your right to ask someone if they haven't already asked you. And if it's a no, tell them to leave. If you are not comfortable with that, you don't want that, you tell them to go, please. Or you say, okay, well, oops, neither of us has them. I guess we'll wait until next time. But please, please, please don't underestimate. If a guy hasn't offered and a guy is saying no, please never brush past that. Please don't underestimate what that actually means because that is just, in my opinion, fucking weird. Like, like I said, not a gray area, not a conversation we should be having. 
If you both don't want to, fine, whatever, you know, do what you want to do. There is so many spicy ones on here. And I'm just like, how much sex do we want to talk about? Friend groups booking holidays without you. They're not, they're not your friends. I hate to say it to you, but they're not friends. Definitely not friends you should be keeping around. Um, it's really sad and that's really shit and I really hope you're okay because that is not a nice feeling ever Like if my friends literally go to like dinner or drinks without me, I'm like What but at the end of the day? I take it as a blessing that they have essentially shown themselves shown themselves the door and Taken their way out. I always think that the nicest way and not even the nicest way like I do genuinely genuinely from the bottom of my heart think this is true that is just the universe making space for people that deserve you in your life. That is the universe making space for people who are actually supposed to be in your life and will actually value being in your life. So although it's really shit, say thanks so much and go and make some new friends, which a lot of people did ask about new friends. So maybe we'll leave it there on a more girly note, but how to make friends outside of school. I think it's really important to find what you love. I, hand on heart, have made my best friends from like Manchester now, going to run clubs, putting myself out there, going and doing things that I genuinely enjoy alone. And when you are there, you do have to, you know, plug up a bit of confidence and like talk to people. But there's always like more confident people at those events, which is a good thing because it means they kind of intro you to each other and there's normally people leading them who are quite good at like, making sure people are talking and just like making, I'll kind of turn up and be like, oh my God, it's so much colder than I thought. Or I'll be like, oh my God, like, oh, I'm so rushed. Like whatever, just like a general comment. See who answers me. <laughs> I feel like in these videos and on my socials, I probably come across quite confident. I'm not that confident. Like if I walk into a space, I'm not starting the conversation. But if you talk to me, I will talk your ear off very confident, very happy to sit here all day and chat to you, very happy to go to things alone, not good at starting conversations. Something that I do wanna work on and I'm trying, but again, like I've made such good friends by going to things alone, like not necessarily the best conversation starter. Don't like, don't worry, like just go to these things and see, and don't worry about like standing alone and like standing alone, not talking to anyone for the first five minutes, first 10 minutes, the whole first time you go, like don't let that put you off, that's okay. Like I've done that before, I've gone to the same run club and like that week, there's n I've not been feeling like too, ah, so I haven't been making too many conversations. And I left, I hadn't really spoke to anyone. I spoke to like a couple girls for a couple of minutes and so I was like, okay, well that wasn't a very successful one, but that's okay because I also met like my best friend at that run club like two weeks prior, um, two weeks prior. So find what you enjoy and go and do a lot of it. Like just dive headfirst into it and don't worry if you're not too confident. Of course, like there's always room for growth and you will get to a point one day where you can talk to people and you can start conversations. I also do think when it comes to making friends, social media, like do not underestimate the power of social media. I know like all of my friends in Manchester, they've met their friends through either run clubs or by DMing them and being like, do you want to go for a run, for a coffee, for a drink? Like the amount of people that DM me like, do you want to go for a coffee? And I'm like, yeah, sure. One of my friends currently met her flatmate that she's living with now on Bubble BFF. Another one met them on TikTok. They've seen each other on their TikTok view pages. And it's not weird either. Like everybody wants friends. Everybody wants more friends. Everybody wants good quality friendships. So don't be scared to put yourself out there. We can chat me and you, can't we? I think for everybody's sake, especially my mother and father's, we should leave this video here. It definitely got a bit spicy, definitely got a little bit sweaty, but I hope you enjoyed it. Um, like I said, love these conversations. Always happy to have a fun girl talk. So hope you enjoyed it too. And I will see you next week for like a week of workouts, week of training and eating to feel my best. What that currently looks like for me at the moment. And I'm super excited to film it for you. So I'll see you there. Bye guys. <laughs>